We all start our DBT models by staring at a blank SQL file, but depending on what you do next will significantly impact how your project turns out. In today's video, I wanna share with you the easy four-step process that I personally follow when building DBT models and how this simple approach can save you tons of time in both development and long-term maintenance. Also, if you're new to DBT or just looking for a few other tips to get started, I put together a free PDF that I've called the Starter Guide for DBT, and you can grab a copy of the link uh, down below in the description or as the first comment. So with that said, let's now dive in. The first step I take when creating a model is to add what can be referred to as the imports section. And this takes influence from Python where you'll often import modules that you're working with right at the top of the script. But in our case, instead of modules, we will be importing sources or other DBT models in our project. I also wanna point out that throughout this process, we're going to be making heavy use of CTEs or common table expressions along with the select star syntax. And I've explained this in detail uh, in both the starter guide as well as in other videos. But essentially modern databases are smart enough to only pull the columns you need. And therefore a select star is a non-issue performance wise or anything else when you put them into CTEs. So in this case, we will bring in each underlying source or other model we need as a select star in the CTE. And this is helpful for three big reasons. First, it allows you to quickly see other data that's being used in a particular model. Second, it allows you to alias each of them with a new name once, which makes your joins a lot cleaner. And it also helps ensure that you're properly linking together your models and sources, which in turn helps you create a more clear DAG at the end of the day. Now, of course, most models will need some sort of custom transformations. So the next step I take is to create CTEs that hold custom logic. This will likely be the largest section and where most of the activity ends up happening. A rule of thumb I like to follow is to create custom CTEs when the granularity of the result will be different than whatever the final result set will be in that model. Now, because we imported it once and renamed it, we can use those imported ones multiple times throughout the query and not have to re-alias each time. This gives your query a cleaner overall look and starts to build a consistent look and feel to your models. Don't be scared to break up complex logic into multiple CTEs if needed. The goal here is to improve readability and organization. Once all the custom logic is set, the last step is to bring it all together into one final CTE. I like to actually call this CTE final so that it's clear and will be the final columns you want returned as part of your model data set. If you do happen to have transformations that are on the same granularity, as your final result set, then it's perfectly acceptable to add those in this final CTE. So again, we will select all of our final columns we need and wrap it in the final CTE. I realize this may seem a bit odd, but as we'll touch on in the last step, structuring it this way does give us some more options. Now at this point, everything is stuck in this CTE and there actually isn't a result set being returned. So to finish this off, what we'll do is we'll write one final line, which is just select star, from final. And this will return that final result set from the final CTE we just made and allow it to create the model that way. So I realize, yes, this may seem redundant, but this makes future troubleshooting much, much easier. For example, let's say you get an error, but you're not quite sure where exactly that's happening. You can easily swap out your final select with the name of a previous CTE to view the results and see where it errors out. Again, this is possible because the query engine will only return the columns it needs. And if you're not selecting anything from that final CTE, it will essentially disregard it. Personally, even if I only have one import and one final, I still follow this whole process just to keep consistency in my models. It's important to remember the biggest cost in development is usually the long-term maintenance. Implementing this approach across your models will not only help you more quickly build your project, but also reduce the time-consuming tasks of code review and debugging since every model will follow the same structure and kind of have the same look and feel. If you found this helpful and want more tips like this, grab yourself a copy of my starter guide for DBT PDF, link below. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next one.